Hey there, Monica Wallace here. So this is my vlog. Say hi to Lolo. This is my little Lolo. You might see her around here um, every once in a while <laughs> because she's my little baby. That's that's exactly what she is. She's my baby. Um, so yeah, this is my vlog. Welcome. Um, and here you're going to find podcast podcast episodes from the Women's Health Matters podcast. Um, you can find it on Apple Podcasts. You can find it on Spotify. You can find it on Anchor.fm. You can find it pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to be posting my podcast episodes here um, on my YouTube channel, but I'm also going to be doing um, a vlog here as well. I'm going to post all of my other videos that I've posted on Instagram and Facebook. I just want to have it all in one place, you know what I mean? And because um, right now it's like everywhere, all over my computer, and I'm, I'm actually honestly a really organized person, but um, <clears throat> I don't have my videos and audios and all of that stuff organized because it's just like, I don't know, it's a lot. So um, on top of everything else that I, I'm doing and that I do. So I'm going to put it all here. And this part of the vlog though um, is I'm going to be talking about my personal experience with uh, fibroids and endometriosis and infertility because I wanted to do that for a couple of reasons because it is part of women's health obviously. Um, these things are women's health disorders. A lot of women deal with them. Um, you know, one in eight women deal with infertility. Um, ton, uh, hundreds of thousands of women deal with endometriosis every year. Um, hundreds of thousands of women deal with fibroids every year. I mean, these things are common and a lot of people don't even realize how common they actually are. And so I wanted to bring you through my experience with them and, um, and tell you a little bit about, you know, what I've been dealing with in my life when it comes to fibroids and endo and, and infertility. And, um, you know, I do it because I want other women to feel empowered to be able to tell their stories and get it out there because more of us need to tell our stories. People need to realize that, um, number one, it's not uncommon to have these disorders. Uh, number two, what we are experiencing when we have these disorders and how it affects us, how it affects our lives, how it affects our relationships, how it affects our careers, how it affects every aspect of our lives, basically. Um, three, to allow women to see that they're not alone, um, that there are other women out there just like them, just like me, just like you, maybe if you are, are dealing with these things, um, you know, and really feel like you have someone who understands what you are experiencing, because I do. I mean, I've been dealing with this stuff for, well, I mean, 22 years since I was diagnosed with endo, um, but about, gosh, I guess that, that's crazy. I just thought about it. 30 years um, since I started having symptoms, since I started having pain from endo, 30 years since I had my first ER visit when I was 12 years old, my, my mother brought me to the ER because I was in such excruciating pain from my period. I, I mean, I literally thought I was going to die. Um, so 30 years I've been dealing with this crap and, um, enough is enough. You know, I, I'm putting an end to it, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to come here and tell, tell you about what I have been experiencing in the last 30 years, um, when it comes to women's health disorders, uh, endometriosis and fibroids and infertility, namely, 
Um, but there are other women's health disorders and, um, you know, I, I am talking about that stuff on the podcast. So if you want to check out the women's health matters podcast, um, anywhere you can, uh, listen to podcasts pretty much, then please go listen to it because I'm talking about all kinds of stuff there. We're talking about the menstrual cycle and we're talking about tracking your fertility and we're talking about, um, different kinds of menstrual products and pads and cups and tampons and all kinds of things. So we're talking about all kinds of things over there, not just fibroids and endometriosis and infertility. That's what this vlog is for. And um, so I want you to follow me for the next two weeks uh, because in two weeks, well, about, I think, 17 days, in 17 days, I am going to have a myomectomy and I'm having the endometriosis excised out of my pelvis um that's been there for 30 years it's time for it to go bye-bye um i have a 12 centimeter fibroid sitting on my uterus on the very top of my uterus it's fundal the the top of the uterus is called the fundus so it's a fundal fibroid it's subserosal meaning it is on the outside of my uterus uh we don't know how superficial it is, how, how much above the uterine muscle it is, but it is slightly inside of the uterine muscle, which means it is not pedunculated. Pedunculated it means it's like growing off a stalk and it's like a little tree on the outside of my uterus, but it's not doing that, unfortunately. Um, 12 centimeters is huge. If you think about it, 10 centimeters is the size of a baby's head. So 12 centimeters is huge and that thing's sitting on my bladder i'm going to post some i'll post some pictures later too so you can see um it's sitting on my bladder it's sitting on my intestines it's pressing on my sacrum which is in my back which means my back is constantly hurting um my stomach is humongous i look like i'm six months pregnant i feel like i'm six months pregnant i mean that's how much pressure i have like in my in my pelvic area and on my pubic bone on my back um the sciatica from it is terrible my hips ache all the time i get shooting sharp pains um i have super low blood pressure from it because it's probably pressing on an artery but it also takes all of your blood supply not all of it but a lot of your blood supply to supply this humongous Longest freaking massive fibroid. Um, so it makes you feel tired all the time. You feel tired. I feel out of breath all the time. I feel out of breath because like this thing is all the way up. Yes, I am in my pajamas. Um, I, I don't care. I don't care if I'm in my pajamas because you're going to see me. You're going to see me in the hospital, in the hospital bed, like before I go in for the surgery, after I come out of the surgery. So like, why should I care if you see me in my pajamas right now? Yes, I want to be nice and professional, but like at the same time, again, you're going to see me in my hospital gown. Who cares? Um, so... <laughs> So yeah, anyway, this is a really nice nightgown. I'm not going to show you too far down because it is kind of see-through. Um, I'll just cover, I'll just, I'll just cover them. Um, it's super cute though. Look at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's super cute. Um, my husband, I think got it at Ross for my birthday and it is so soft. Like this material is so super light that yes, you can see through it. Um, but it's like, it's so soft and it's light and it's great for summer. Um, I'm in South Florida, so it's really, really nice. It's just really, really nice. And I plan on wearing it and I probably should have bought more. Um, I plan on wearing it after the surgery too. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to have this myomectomy. It involves cutting, um, probably about a four or five inch, um, incision, at my bikini line so that's just so that's super pubic which means it's just above the pubic bone if you feel um the mound down uh just below your pelvis you know just above where your vulva is um and it's not vagina it's vulva but we're going to talk about that in a podcast episode um, so just above where that is and you feel that mound that then you press in and it's really hard that's your pubic bone um, so you can feel the top of your pubic bone, like where your pubic bone ends. If you, if you move your fingertips up a little bit more towards your belly button. Um, so the incision is going to be about four to five inches, probably above that pubic bone. So that kind of sucks because I don't know. I just, I'm not really one who, who is very interested in 
doing crazy things like that to my body. I mean, that's a lie. I, I do. Ha I have tattoos. And whenever I think about that, I always think like, oh, people probably say, oh, yeah, I have tattoos. And, well, it's not really the same thing. Tattoos are pretty. Tattoos aren't like opening your body up and taking things out of it. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. Um, the thing is this, you guys, listen, this is the thing. I have been dealing with at least the endometriosis for 30 years. I was diagnosed 22 years ago. They found the fibroid about four years ago. It was seven centimeters then. And crazy thing, I'm just going to keep it short because this is in my podcast. I want you to go listen to it. Um, I did end up pregnant last year. So weird. So shocked. Craziest thing that could have ever happened because I've never had a pregnancy before that. And, um, and I ended up pregnant and, you know, from that point I was like, okay, that's weird. Now I know my body can do this. Now I really should probably do something to fix this situation. Even though I don't know if it's the fibroid, I don't think it is because I mean, I probably have only had this fibroid for, I'd say max 10 years. And I was trying to get pregnant for 22 years. Um, Jason and I have been married for 22 years and we've been trying the whole time. We never used birth control. And, um, and so what's the deal with that? Like, I'm wondering, you know, because she's going to excise the endometriosis, which is great. And maybe that's been the problem all along. I have no clue. No clue. I mean, I have no other problems with my cycle. There's nothing else going on. Jason's fine, whatever. Um, and so I'm like, it's got to be the endometriosis. It's got to be. I had a laparoscopy in 1998. They said I had some endometriosis spread out inside my pelvis. And that's all I know about it. So we, this is going to be a surprise when this doctor goes in now um, in a couple weeks. The fibroid, it's humongous probably been there about 10 years. It grew super fast when I got pregnant um, last May because, not when, but after, uh, because I did have a miscarriage, um, probably the fibroid. That was probably the fibroid. I mean, there's no room. There's no room in there. The uterus is squished. It's like this tiny little, it's like squish. It's like, you know, I mean, it's, it's supposed to look like this. What? What? <laughs> it's supposed to look like this. You see the uterus? Sorry. Um, I get a little backwards with the with the camera. And now it's kind of like it literally like looks like this. It's like totally squished. All right. So that's a problem. Cannot hold a pregnancy when it's squished. So that's probably what happened. That's probably why I miscarried. But now I know my body can do it. So that's what like sent me on the road to wanting to have the surgery even more. And so um by the way, there's two really small fibroids in there. She doesn't know how big they are. They're, they're probably like two or three centimeters, um, but we're going to take those out too. And I didn't really want to take those out because the thing is, is that I really wanted to try and have a vaginal birth um, after the myomectomy. And that's very similar to having a vaginal birth after a cesarean. And this is all like tentative. It's all depending on whether or not I even get pregnant, whether or not this surgery even works. And, and that's the whole reason why I've been dealing with infertility for 22 years. Like I, it's all like up in the air and I'm such a, I'm such a planner and I'm pretty controlling too. I, I mean, I try to be really like laid back about it, but, but I am, I am pretty, I, I need, I need stuff planned. Like it's got to be like, boom, boom, boom. Right. So, um, so I don't even know if this is going to happen. So it's like, do, do I plan this surgery based upon whether or not I may or may not get pregnant? Like it, it, it's so weird. It's like, it's been like torture for 22 years, let me tell you. And, um, I talk a little bit more about that in the podcast. I, I just, I'm just like flying off I'm just flying off the handle, like whatever comes out of my mouth right now. So, um, anyway, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get pregnant. And if I'm not like, after all these years, 
after all this torture, all this pain, the way that it's uh, affected me and my relationships and my career and, and every single freaking aspect of my life, how disgustingly, horribly painful it's been for 22 years, um, I'm starting to come with, to terms with the fact that um, it may not it may not happen. And I'm trying to start seeing the light. Um, I'd say the last few years, I mean, the last year has been okay, but um, the few years before that, I, I felt like I was being tortured. I was, I was in a very dark place and I had gone down a very, very deep, dark hole. Um, and and it was bad. It was really, really bad. And I'm starting to kind of see the light at this point. And now that I'm 42 years old, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, you know what? I, I've got to, I've got to do something. Like my, I still have a whole life ahead of me. You know, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm been wasting so much time. I've been wasting so much freaking time trying to plan for a future that I, I mean, I can't even plan for. So it's time and I'm starting to realize this, it's time for me to, to start seeing a future um, where I make myself happy and I make my husband happy uh, because I used to do those things. I used to do those things when I was younger and it was fun. It was a lot of fun and uh, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy being happy and I'm sick and tired of being pissed off at the world and being, um, you know, thinking that the universe has played a cruel joke on me. Um, you know, I keep looking for the answers and I keep looking for the lesson in all of this and I haven't quite found it yet, but I am starting to realize more and more that, um, that I was called to be a midwife for a reason. I, I used to think that it was a cruel joke that I was called to be a midwife when my own uterus doesn't work properly. And um, I felt it so ironic all the time, but I'm starting to realize that maybe I was called because of this, um, this issue that I have. And maybe I was called because I would be able to have the time for women, um, to support women and to be there for them and to mother them, um, you know, just mothering in a different way, but still being a mother. And I've always felt that way, uh, as a, as a midwife and a doula and, uh, as an aunt, I became an aunt very young. Uh, when I was six years old, my niece Nikki was born and I had quite a few nieces and nephews follow follow along after that. And uh, I was always the babysitter and I was always the one who, you know, the caretaker and I loved it and it was awesome. And, um, and from there I became a doula at age 19. Uh, I, I, you know, was a labor assistant in uh, labor and delivery from the age of 17, I went to my first birth at 16 when uh, my friend gave birth and she actually changed my view of birth completely at that time. And, uh, and so when I look back and I start to think about it, maybe, maybe I was called for a reason and maybe this was all for a reason and not just some cool joke that the universe is playing on me. Um, you know, I, I am starting to see that. So if you are in this position and, and you, that's how you feel. Um, I know it, it's slightly different because I'm a midwife and, and like, it's weird. It's, it, it's been weird all these years, um, to be a midwife <laughs> and have a uterus that doesn't work. And like, I'm taking care of everybody else's uterus. Um, not that I don't like being a midwife. I freaking love it, you guys. It's my passion. It's my calling. Like, I can't get away from it. I, I've tried to quit so many times because I, I'm tired and I'm in pain and, and you know, like all of these things. And, and it. I just keep coming back. It reels me back in. 
every single time. And it, I, I don't quit because I want to, but I quit because, um, because I'm hurting. I'm hurting um, emotionally, mentally, and physically from these disorders that are ailing me. And I'm sick and tired of them, and I'm getting rid of them. I'm getting rid of them on August 21st. In two weeks, they're gone. They're gone. They're done. I, and it's the weirdest feeling, and I don't even know what to feel about it, because for 30 years, you guys, I, I have had this. For more than half of my life, I have been dealing with this ailment and and it's about to go away and that part is really scary um but it's really exciting too um another part that's really scary is that they're going to be operating and cutting open my uterus that's really scary um there's a very 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 small risk of having to remove the uterus in case there is some kind of hemorrhaging and that risk scares the crap out of me i don't even know what i would do i feel like i would freaking die die. But that's not going to happen. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Um, you know, that's just something that that's a little scary to me. I started telling you about the cesarean or, or the vaginal birth after myomectomy, which is similar to a VBAC uh, or a vaginal birth after cesarean. Um, and I didn't finish that thought. I'm sorry about that. I, I'm trying to like make this fast so you don't get bored sitting here looking at my vlog and I'm like, okay, Monica, come on. Like, pick up the pace. Um, so I'm skipping around and I'm forgetting to tell you things and I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, so about that. So the two little fibroids, so if she takes the two little fibroids out that are like on another part of the uterus, then she's going to make another, like two incisions and sometimes maybe even three, depending on like how close those two fibroids are to each other. And like the more incisions you make, obviously the less integrity the uterine muscle has to contract and labor. And so that's scary. Hopefully, please pray for me that they're super superficial, that they're not in the uterine muscle hardly at all, that she doesn't have to cut into the uterine muscle very much. Um, same thing with the big one. Like if it's like just on the surface, like that would be amazing. Here, let me show you really quick. Like, okay, let me show you really quick. Um, this is the uterus, okay? And so here, this is a fibroid. This is uh, this is an intramural fibroid right here. This is not the kind I have, but this, you see, it's inside the uterine muscle. This one's called a submucosal fibroid. You see that right here? So this one is inside of the muscle, but it's also protruding into the cavity. You see that? So this is inside the uterine muscle, and this one is intramural, um, protruding into the uterine cavity. These, they usually have to go up through the cervix and inside of the uterus to get out. Um, and then you have subserosal, which this uterus actually doesn't show a subserosal fibroid, which is the kind I have. So you see the, um, the intramural is inside of the uterine muscle, okay? And then you have the subserosal, which is inside of the uterus. And then you have a subserosal, which is what I have, which would be on the outside, which would be on the outside of the uterus and like slightly maybe into the top of the uterine muscle. All right. Um, and then there's uh, endometriosis, which this is endometriosis here. They're like little, um, they're little lesions of what looks like endometrial tissue on the uterus. Um, it can be on the ovary. Here's a little bit of endometriosis on the ovary or on the uh, fallopian tube here. All right, so here's a little bit of endometriosis on the fallopian tube. So that is what endometriosis looks like, all right? So she's going to take, um, she's going to take a tool and actually like dig this out, um, dig the roots out and remove it from wherever it is. It can be uh, on the fallopian tube, it can be on the ovary, um, it can be uh, pretty much anywhere in the pelvis, um, the endometriosis. So kind of crazy. And so if you 
if you pray or you light candles or you send good vibes or whatever it is you do, on August 21st, I'm going to have this surgery at 9 a.m. It's been 30 years coming. Um, it's scary. They're going to cut into my uterus in several different places. Um, they're going to remove endometriosis lesions that have been there for 30 years or more um, that have caused me pain and anguish and anxiety and have caused me to lose sleep, lose hope, lose work, lose money, lose love, lose relationships, lose friendships, lose time. And now it's time to lose the endometriosis. Um, the surgery is slightly scary, but I am hopeful and I am feeling positive as much as I possibly can. I'm, I'm keeping myself positive. I'm insisting that I stay positive. Um, I'm hoping that this surgery will bring me peace and, um, and will bring me back my, my hope, um, and my hope for a normal life and my hope for the possibility of maybe a family. And if not that, my hope for, um, being able to know the reason for, for why this has happened, why this is the situation that I have and remember that, um, that even if I, I do not get pregnant after this, that I am still a mother and, um, and I hope that you will pray or light candles with me or send beautiful vibes and energy to me and the doctors and the nurses and everybody involved, um, my caretakers, my husband, my little Lolo. <laughs> um, I hope that you will, will be with me uh, through it. And if you are in this situation, I promise if you let me know you're going through it, I will be with you through it as well. Um, so I do have my podcast, the Women's Health Matters podcast. Look for it wherever you listen to podcasts. Just go look up the Women's Health Matters podcast. It's really good. Um, and I have a Patreon page. So on the Patreon page, and I'm going to be doing this in recovery. So the recovery is like six to eight weeks. It's freaking long, you guys. But after about a couple weeks, like I won't be woozy anymore and I'll be able to do things and I'm going to be back on and I'm going to be in the next two weeks. I'm, I'm hoping to record some yoga classes, some prenatal yoga, um, a childbirth education class, the comfort techniques for labor childbirth education class. Hopefully I can get that done. Um, and then I'll let you all know. But also on my Patreon page, you can support me. You can support me. You can support um, the podcast. You can subscribe and support uh, me in recovery while I'm still uh, building things on the podcast and I'm, I'm building the website and I'm, um, I'm hoping to go virtual with my uh, prenatal yoga and my women's health counseling. Um, I've got a lot going on and I've got a lot planned and I'm really excited about it. And if you want to support me, um, and you want to support me, especially through recovery, because it's not going to be easy, uh, because I'm not going to be able to do regular work, um, like I normally would be able to, but I will still be pumping out, um, information, women's health education, and you can sign up and subscribe for one of the tiers and you will get, um, a lot of really great stuff with each tier as well. So it's worth, it's worth going and subscribing and, and supporting the podcast because I have so many big dreams for it. I've got so many good ideas and I really, really want to bring it to you, um, especially doing calls. I want to take calls. I want to be able to take calls and interview um, with other women who are having the same experiences uh, as we are in certain aspects of their lives and their health. So that's the deal. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. I want you to stay on this vlog because I'm going to be posting stuff like what I'm doing every day, like my exercise routine and my 
eating routine and like um, everything all the way up through recovery. I'm going to be showing you all of it. So if you have a myomectomy or endometriosis excision coming up, um, then subscribe to this vlog and and take a look and, and see, you know, what I'm going through, what I'm doing. Um, I have... Um, a little bit of extra information and knowledge in there too because I'm a licensed midwife so um, I can give you a little bit of a down low on the medical side of things as well and uh, interpret interpret uh, my OR report and all kinds of great stuff so keep an eye out subscribe to this vlog you're gonna see my podcast on here as well I'm gonna be starting to load all of my um, all my other videos as well it's, they're all really educational great videos so you should go check them out no reason not to and, um, and I'm going to put these vlogs uh, for the myomectomy and the endometriosis excision, um, I think, in a little folder. I think you can do that. I'm going to try it, and we'll see what happens. So um, give me some feedback. Let me know. Let me know what you think of the vlog. Uh, leave me some comments. Um, I would love to hear from you all. I could use as much love and cheering on as absolutely possible. So um, keep an eye out for some more videos. And... I hope to be able to rally around, uh, you know, have a, a bunch of people rally around me for this, this surgery that's 30 years in the making. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me. I will talk to you really soon. Bye.